Um, it was as clear as day. It was as clear as day. And I'll give you, again, what I would call the pluses and the minuses. And I hesitate to even call them that because everything is so TBD. But walking into the uh, into the room, the suite level at Oracle Park today, it was very clear. And I mean the second you walked in. Look, we've all done a lot of these things. And you can tell when people are excited and when people aren't. And and the first thing you see is the number of people who showed up. A lot of people. Oh, yeah. A lot of people. A lot of people within the organization. You know what I mean? Pat Burrell just cruising around like all all smiles. And you see what the Giants are doing. And Buster's the president. Bo Mel's the manager. Matt Williams the third. Burrell's the hitting coach. Like, you see what they're doing. And is that the right thing or is that a PR thing? I think in this moment, it's a little of both. Hopefully it's a lot of both. Yeah, hopefully it's a lot of both. But people were excited about this. The media is sort of reflecting what you, the public, think about this and feel about this. And everyone prioritized being there. And everyone across the board was like, this is exciting. And people within the organization let me just tell you, I, I, I described it earlier, and I think I might have been talking about something else, but the, the analogy plays. People within the organization looked like they had just taken a shower after a hike. Like, that's how they felt. That's, it was just like, oh, God, thank goodness. Thank goodness. And so all positivity there, followed by some of Buster's opening remarks, which we will play for you in a moment, but I thought the summary of his remarks were, this is about players. We need better players. We used to, our teams created memories with great players. And Barry Bonds created great memories. Will Clark, memories. McCovey, Mays, Marischal, memories. We need better players. And that's what we're going to try to go do. I think that has to hit people in a good spot, don't you think? Yes, and I think even beyond we need better players we need our players to play better i think that is as much a part of it as we need better players the players that we have need to play better and i heard a lot today about fundamentals and pitching and defense and you know buster even talked about changes to scouting and coaching staff changes and we know that the gm pete patilla is going to be reassigned in some sort of a role but i look at what the message was today, and it was, of course, we need better players, but we need to get back to playing Giants baseball. And if you think about when they won the World Series in 2010, 12, and 14, yeah, it was pitching and defense. And one of those years, they actually were toward the top in home runs. One year, they were dead last in home runs. Yep. So it isn't only about we need better hitters, we need more power, we need more boppers. And Buster said this today, and I think Bo Mel actually echoed it, saying, you need to have an offense that can score in a number of different ways. And I was thinking a little bit about the 49ers and Kyle Shanahan. You have to be able to run it. You have to be able to throw it shallow, throw it intermediate, throw it deep. You have to have a special teams unit that can not give up big plays and can hold their own and make <laughs> field goals and cover punts and you know cover kickoffs and return kickoffs. And you need to have all three phases on a football team be buttoned up. And I think about this Giants team this year, and they didn't hit a lot of home runs, and you struck out a bunch, you weren't very fast, and you didn't situationally hit very well. So if you want to like take that analogy to football, your ground game was terrible, your deep throwing game, home runs, was mediocre, your, your strikeouts, which are basically, to me, like penalties, like false starts and illegal shifts and the rest of it, when you strike out, nothing good can happen unless the catcher misses the third strike. You were the Jacksonville Jaguars, but you found a way to go 8-9. and nine. Right. You're sort of like the Jets from last year. You had no quarterback, but you found a way to go 7-10 and 10 because sometimes things would bounce your way. Yeah. I mean, if you want to look at things through like that lens. A little bit like the Denver Broncos. You, know, well, you had a pretty good defense, listen, pitching and defense. This is why I find it believable that the turnaround could be quick. I don't know what what moves they're going to make. I don't know which of the young guys are sustainable, which of them will really hit, right? Is Hayden Birdsong suddenly just going to be a staple in the rotation all year? Maybe he will. I don't know. 
But when you look at a team that went 80 and 82, but you also go, they didn't do anything well. What did they do well? What did they do well? Uh, well, eh, starting pitching in the second half was good. Okay. That's a little bit of a small sample. Yeah. I mean, they were Blake terrible. Snell. The running game, they were a net negative. They were the worst in baseball. As far as stolen bases versus stolen bases allowed. Of course. Home runs, you were, I think, 15th or 16th. Not great. Strikeouts, you struck out, I think, the eighth well, most in baseball. What if I just g- gave you broad strokes and the whole year? Not Don't spotlight the last two months. Were they a good hitting team? Are we doing Grandy's grades? Were they a good hitting team? Uh, hitting, they probably would get um, a C-. minus. Were they a good pitching team? Pitching... Probably a C. Were they a good defensive team? I would say C plus to B minus. Were they a good running team? Oh, they were a D minus or an F. Were they a good power team? They were a C. And were they fun? A fun? Like fun and interesting? I said, were they fun? Oh, D minus. Okay. So again, I'll ask you. Their average grade was about a C minus. What did they do well? Not a th- not much. Thank you. Nothing. Well, Steiny and Goo actually had an interesting conversation earlier about did they underachieve? And I really don't think that they underachieved at oh, all. I get where you're coming from. That's a hard that question to answer because it it's is. based on everybody's initial perspective on what they what they were going to be. I'd argue if you if you took what it sounded like. On opening day, what what the fans sounded like, right. I would argue that they did underachieve. But that was just our our prediction right. and 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 our our excitement in the fact that Chapman and Snell late in the game both joined the team. I get it, but Snell didn't pitch much until mid June. Which we didn't know that then. Right, but I'm just looking back at it, and I'm looking at the totality of their parts. And Kyle Harrison, we were expecting too much out of a 22 year old making his first real season. As a frontline starter, Jordan Hicks was a converted reliever. We expected too much out of him. The rest of the rotation, your various Keaton wins, and the rest of it, until Hayden Birdsong, it's like, okay, Birdsong kind of was a deodorant to a rotation that underachieved. Your bullpen was hit and miss the majority of the year. Your closer had to get sent to AAA. I mean, I mean your pitching staff, if anything underachieved, it was your pitching staff. Right. I think that the offensive line, the lineup itself was about what you would have expected. Chapman had a year that you would have expected. Conforto was what you thought he would be. Patrick Bailey was phenomenal and then absolutely terrible. And he kind of leveled out to about where you'd expect. Yeah. Elliot Ramos was a bright spot. He was better than you thought he would be. Of course. No doubt. Uh, Wade got hurt and was out forever. Tyro was a disappointment. Casey Schmidt was underwhelming. Tyler Fitzgerald was a big plus. Yeah, that was a find. A Yaz was exactly what you thought Yaz would well, be. Mm, he hit like 212 solid, with 20 home runs. Solid baseball player. <laughs> right. So, know. in general, I think the offense turned out to be about what you would have thought it would be. Um, you know, you didn't mention Jung Hoo Lee. Obviously, he was exciting and then he was hurt. Um, here's part of Buster today on uh, the Giants' identity going forward. I wouldn't say the brand's been tarnished. I mean, again, I think that's a lot of discussion we're going to be having over the next weeks and months is about our identity, you know, and, and, and again, I want to be clear, like our identity really boils down to the players on the field and the way that they play and, and uh, the type of players they are and how they handle themselves, not only on the field, but in the community. So I think that's going to be a big part of discussion is like what, what really is important to us as an organization and, and what are we going to hang our hat on at the end of the day? Okay, so... I spotlight that one for a specific reason. This would be o- the only thing that you could consider a downside for today. And I don't really think it's that. I think it was predictable, and I think it, 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 there was no way around this. But Buster Posey at certain times sounded very green. And he is. Right. He's never done this before. He's 37 years old. But when someone asks you, when you take a new job as the president of baseball operations... And, and the, 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 the old guy has been removed, who, who so many people did not like. He's gone, and here comes the new guy. And that almost sounded like in an election year asking a presidential candidate, all right, what's your thought on, pick a topic, the border, abortion, whatever thing we're never going to talk about. 
throw that out. What's your thought on that? Well, we're going to talk to people and we're going to find out what we think about that in the next two months. It's not an acceptable answer. If it were a presidential situation. Right. This is Buster Posey. Right. But you did like in a perfect world. Hey, Buster, what's your identity? And his answer is, well, we're going to talk with the people we hire. And as a group, we're going to come up with our identity. It would sound so much better if he leaned in and looked at the camera and goes, this is who we're going to be. Well, what, what does that even mean? Well, you know, what, like, I, I think there's we're gonna a, be, We're going to be a team that goes out there and throws strikes, and when the other team hits it, we're going to catch it and throw to the proper base. No, I don't think that. I think that there's a way to answer that question. Different organizations prioritize different things. For instance, you have cited a few times where he has used the phrase pitching and defense. That can be an identity. Right. It was for three World Series championships not that long ago. You can sort of give your philosophy on things. We want more everyday players. We want to be faster. We want to have pitching and defense yeah, enough. as our calling cards or whatever. We want to hit 300 home runs in a year. You can say whatever you want, but what Buster said was, well, we're going to talk about it and figure it out, Right. which is fine as long as we all accept that he's green. He doesn't have all the answers yet that someone might normally have in this particular press conference. Fair enough, but I ask you, what was their identity this year? Their identity was, we are mediocre. We're yeah, good at not nothing. We're not fast. We don't have a lot of power. We don't have a lot of frontline starting pitching, and our bullpen is not very good. I can tell you what Nobody they, like us. <laughs> I can tell you what they wanted it to be, and you're right, they weren't. And that's the worst thing. Like, Bowmel to me represented we're going to button up the baseball. Yeah. Gabe Kapler, what did he want? I Matchups. Want, I want human beings. In other words, like we're going to have lots of coaches and uh, and we're going to do it a certain way and we're going to be about a, uh, a, a philosophy and that's the kind of person that we want and that person can have three different faces. That person can be a left-hander or it can be a right-hander, or it can be a switch hitter, or it can be a moment, or who pitches the eighth, who pitches the eighth and a half, and like overly doing all of that. Bowmel wanted to come in and go, you know what, we need we need Major League Baseball players. We need people who are going to be professionals. You run hard to first. You pick up the ball when it's hit to you. You know what the hell you're doing out there, and you go play baseball. Go be a baseball player. And then they gave us Marco Luciano at short. And the guy's literally like, I mean, you might as well have had someone face backward toward home plate when the hitters are hitting the ball. So that was what they wanted their identity to be, but it wasn't. Right. And that's why Farhan Zaidi, I think, largely lost his job because they had no identity. And I'm just looking at a few quick metrics from the season. They committed 87 errors, which was one more and the league average. So they were an average defense as it pertains to just errors. They were average at almost everything. Their ERA, 4.10. League average, 4.07. So they were a tick below average. OPS, on base plus slugging. Their OPS was 701. The league average was 711. So every metric, they were either a tiny bit above or a tiny bit below. And you look at your record and you were 80 and 82. And in terms of interest level and sizzle, you were probably the 21st most interesting team in baseball. You didn't have a lot of name players. You didn't have a lot of excitement. Elliot Ramos was an all-star based on seven weeks. Logan Webb is always your all-star. He was good and solid all year. But beyond that, you had a meteoric closer who couldn't keep the job. Your best player is probably your third baseman who he strikes out a lot. He's really good on defense. Oh, he was but like first half of the year, people were largely more often than not frustrated with Matt Chapman. Yeah, but he settled in. He settled in and had the year. I think when you look at his numbers and then add in his leadership abilities, his professionalism, and his durability, no he had the year that you wanted him to have. And he had the year that you're expecting him to right. have over the next four or five. But, but beyond that, uh, your your catcher was good defensively, and then he wasn't, and then he couldn't hit and. On and on, your exciting center fielder got hurt after a, a month and change, and then the rest of it was just kind of piecemealed mediocrity. So 
what's Buster supposed to say about his identity? He can say, you know, we want to be pitching in defense or we want to hit a lot of home runs or we want to this or we want to that. But you look at your roster right now and you don't have an identity. And that maybe is what he has to do between now and March is to figure out how to make this roster into one that has an identity. Well, and again, I I think that he answered it indirectly throughout the day. Um, Buster Posey wants better players. And I know that you go, well, that's not an identity. Who doesn't want that? I mean that he wants players that people might talk about after the game. You know what I mean? And you hope Bryce Eldridge is, is, is one of those guys. Um, they're probably going to need to sign a few guys. But, yeah, it, it, it's got to come. It's got to come up through the farm. And so right now, if you want to circle one person that can be the quote-unquote identity of the Giants over the next five to seven years, it's right now it's just a hope. It, that, it really, the, the, there's nothing else that you can sink your teeth into than that. You hope it's Bryce Eldridge. You yeah, hope. You, you, you hope. do. And if you're – looking at Buster Posey and what happened with their run and how they came to prominence. It was more than Buster. It was Pablo and it was Madison Bumgarner and it was Matt Kane and it was Tim Lincecum and it was other homegrown players that turned into the core of guys. And so maybe you already have some of them on the roster now. Patrick Bailey looks like he should be an everyday catcher. And Tyler Fitzgerald is a guy who, if he's not your second baseman, he could be at least your super utility guy and play short and play second and play center field. Elliot Ramos is an all-star. You'd expect him to be a mainstay. And you've got Hayden Birdsong and Logan Webb and Kyle Harrison. So that right there is seven guys who should be a core part of your team for the next two to three or four years. So can you add to that from the farm with the likes of Bryce Eldridge? Can you add to that from the outside and really have a core of guys that fans can start to latch on to. Uh, let's go to Chris in San Jose next up on Willard and Dibs. Hi, Chris. Thanks for calling. And gone. Gone. Yeah. Um, he look, hung up on himself. Yeah. That's how that went. I know. That's what that sound is. Boom. Boom. Totally. <laughs> it's, Call back, Chris. Yeah. You hit a button with your face. 888 957 9570. Let's hear a little bit more. Um, from Buster. This is what he envisions on the Giants moving forward. It really, hopefully, what it's going to be is we all love, I know Bob loves good, crisp, clean baseball and guys that are going to be always prepared. I think what I can draw on from a player is knowing that if I went into a game and I know I had prepared to the best of my ability, no matter the outcome or result of that game, I could be satisfied with that. And that's, you know, for me, I'm hopeful that our guys are going to get there and that's going to be something that is really important to them as well. Um, he was asked how involved he'll be day to day with every little decision that comes for a team. I think that remains to be seen. Um, again, I, you know, I mentioned empowering. We're gonna we're gonna bring a G, bring in a GM, and I think once that comes in, some of the delegation will will take shape a little bit more. I, I want to be uh, as as useful as I can to be with all the people that I'm working with, but also having in mind and understanding that it's somewhat somewhat of a del delicate balancing act to where. I don't want to be the type of leader that is constantly feeling like somebody's I'm looking over somebody's shoulder as well. So I think a lot of that is going to be handled over these next weeks, month, as we start to have more conversations and, and get synced up more. So, see, that's that's what I heard repeatedly today that caught my attention. That's big. Well, it is. But do you notice the way he starts? How involved will you be day to day? His first sentence out of his mouth was that remains to be seen. So the repetitive action of Buster today, and again, I'll state this very clearly. This was exciting. This was awesome. I am all in. I didn't meet anybody who's not all in. Everybody is all in. Just keep in mind that he's green. Because at a press conference, when you're introducing something brand new, it's kind of like going to a job interview. If you go to a job interview and the boss just looks at you and goes, why should I hire you? Well, you're not going to be like, well, that remains to be seen. <laughs> like, you're going to say, here's what I'm thinking. And Buster did very little of that today. There was very little of, this is our identity. This is what I want to do. I want a shortstop. I'm going to hit the trade market. I'm going to this, I'm going to that. He, did, he never did, I'm going to. He did a lot of, well, we're going to hire other people, and then we're going to figure it out. 
What's your identity? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. Well, how do you see the future? Well, it remains to be seen. There was a lot of that. And so I was just reminded of the fact that Buster is 37 years old and he's never done this before. And I much rather would have him say that than say things that he either doesn't sure. believe or can't back up. He's in day two on the job. Right. So he's being asked questions about what are you going to do? And he's 37 with no experience. And so he could say, well, we're going to win the World Series within three years. And we're going to remake this farm system. And we're going to bring in the highest paid free agents that money can possibly buy. And he could sell whoop tickets. And he could go all the way over his skis all he wants. And then in three months, people will circle back and go, well, Buster, you didn't do that. And you didn't do this. And you were wrong about that. The one thing that I heard him say in that answer just kind of reminded me of what drove us crazy about Farhan and it's the constant roster shuffle. And he said something to the effect in that quote of, you know, I'm, I'm going to be not that he's going to be hands off, but he's going to, you know, kind of let guys play. He's going to let guys work through it. Well, I think he's also talking about the people he hires. He's like, I don't want right. to be over their shoulder too much. Right. And I also think that he's going to allow guys to not be yo-yoing back and forth. And I, you'd hope I just picked a guy and I looked at Blake Sable and he got recalled May 4th. He got option May 21st. He got recalled July 30th. He got option August 1st. He got recalled September 1st. And then he got option September 3rd. And then he got recalled today, which is ostensibly oh, that's exciting. meaningless. It it's just means that he's going to be on the 40 man for the off season. But I'm seeing 10 different transactions for a rule five guy who I know he's bottom of the, of the roster, but I could pick any player on the roster outside of the big boys like Schmidt. How many times did he go up and down and oh Luciano and Luis Matos and all the rest of it? And I, I was hearing from Buster, maybe not exactly what he said, but the feeling I got was they're going to pick guys. They're going to have them play and they're going to let them play and not be so quick to just send a guy down. Well, you have to. Yeah, you have to. Look, no matter if it's the young guy that's actually getting yo-yoed or if it's the veteran who has the locker next door who's watching it all happen, yeah. it just makes everybody uncomfortable. Makes everybody uncomfortable. And it's why Evan Longoria a few weeks ago liked a post that said Farhan Zaidi's job is in trouble. Like, just take that. Take that and realize that's how it felt to the players. Doesn't mean they get to run the show, but that's how it felt. And I don't think that that leads to good play. I, I, I'm i a believer in that. You know, some of that stuff in terms of like their, their morale, if you will. That's a word that I keep coming back to.